as we begin 2023, the, the two words that Pastor Patsy felt God gave her in, in her heart were God can. And what can God do for you? Everything. You heard it right now. I mean, Aaron, you know, kind of hit the nail on the head. What can God do for you? Anything and everything. Above all things, no matter what anyone tells you, he can do it. And that's why we're here in 2023 believing that God can. And, and so we started last week mentioning also that we have a prayer time uh, that's coming up this week. We start, today is day one of 21. Day one of 21. From today, for the next 20 days after today, we are doing something different to offer God our best in 2023. And so what we're starting off with is prayer. And then the next week, it's going to be prayer and fasting. And then the last week, prayer, fasting, and worship. Why? Because we're including them all, right? We're, we're, we're making sure we cover our basis. And I do believe that God has something greater for us through this offering that we're going to give. It's an offering. It's not just anything. It's something special to God. It means a lot to God. Our first fruit or our first offering means a lot to God. Often it's related to a financial gift. It's greater than a financial gift. What we offer ourselves, we are worth more than any financial gift. Can you say amen to that? Are you worth more than any amount that's in any bank account? No matter whether it was Steve Jobs at one time to Bill Gates, nothing Nothing in those bank accounts, not even Elon Musk, right? Nothing, 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 nothing is more valuable than us individually to God. That's how valuable we are. And so when we say God can, he can because he wants to, not because he has to. Does that make sense? Doesn't that make you feel a little bit more special? He can because he wants to, not because he has to, not just because he created heaven and earth, not just because he, he, he sent his son, let him die for three days and rose him up again, not just because of that, but because he wanted to and he still wants to. That makes me feel, I can't even say like a million bucks, like a trillion, billion, dillion, 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 zillion, gazillion bucks, or I don't even know if that has, you know, my son does that, he starts saying all these numbers and aliens and aliens and aliens. And I'm like, sure, that's a real number. Because he asked me, is that a real number? I said, somewhere along the lines, there is a number. I couldn't tell you, son. I'll never may probably see that. But, you know, it, that's, that's your worth. There, there's, there's so much worth and value in what God wants to do through us in 2023 that we can say, God can, and if you can, I want you to. Right? And Pastor Patsy started the series off last week, preparing us for this week, for day one, which was prayer. This morning we had a, a prayer moment, and we, we, we gave our offering and said, these next 21 days are yours. We have many needs, we have many wants, we have, we have many desires, we have many things, but we leave it in your hands because ultimately it's what you want, not necessarily what I want. And that's why I'm, I'm saying I give you these 21 days to show me what you want, God, right? And so she, she spoke last week, and, and it was based on prayer, right? And her question that she posed as part of her message was, when will we see things get better? She based that off of Nehemiah 1.3. When will we see things get better? Because haven't you been in a situation where you're wondering why things aren't getting better? Why is it the same? Why is it still drawn on? Why, is, why, why am I not seeing the wheels turn like I wanted them or I expected them to? Is anyone here or just me? I had a lot of those moments in 2022, especially in the last quarter of 2022. Those last three months were doozies. <laughs> and she knows what I'm talking about, and, I, and, and, and she knows what she's talking about. Even up there in the balcony, things are happening, and sometimes we wonder, God, when? 
and how and what's going to happen. And God says, I can, I will. Trust me. And so she said, when will we see things get better? When we pray in desperation, in reverence, without ceasing, when we take responsibility, when we pray with remorse, remorse. Sometimes you just got to say, God, I'm just, I'm sorry. You know, I, I, I am trying. And God says, I know you are. I know you are. And when we pray with his word, that's big. This, this isn't only a lamp. It's, 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 it's what everything that he promised us is based on, his word. When we pray with his word, you have a right you're given a right when you pray with his, with his word. Did you know that? See, the enemy, he doesn't have a word to stand on because he's a f full of lies. He is full of lies. He is a liar from beginning to end. He'll always be a liar. But this is truth. And when you have truth to stand on, you can pray. Use his word and say, God, you told me, and God says, yes, I told you. And I'm glad that you're calling me on it because that means you're, you know my word. That means you're seeking my word. And so prayer has everything to do with us knowing what we're praying for, how we're praying. You know, what is it that God said about what we're praying Now there's a second part to it. Like we're, again, we're entering week one and, and we're focusing on prayer this week. And so I said I'd kick the tires a little bit last week. I said, see how tough you are, Gus. And so, you know, you're good with, you know, you're good. You're, you'll be fine with, with, with the prayer. You know what you need. You know what you need to do. But how about that second part, that week two? What about that week two? Do you know what week two is? Don't say it. Some of us are like that. Don't say it. Jesus said it. Pastor Patsy didn't just say it. You know, person on TV, evangelist, whatever, didn't just say it. Jesus said it. And so when we get to that part, I was like, well, let me kick the tires because, you know, I'm going to speak about it. I got to, mm, I got to do something. I can't just walk up there and say, oh, I hope in week two I can bust the move, right? And it didn't happen. <laughs> you know, so you know, I took a little time to do that. And uh, it wasn't as easy as I thought. You know, I'm, I, I'll admit it. I'm, you know, I mean, I'm a person just like you. I mean, and temptation and hunger, you know. And we'll read a little bit more in a, in a little bit about how Jesus felt when he had to do it. You know, so things happen, but you know what? It was all the worth it. It was all the worth it. If I had to say, why, Gus? Why is it worth it? Why would you say it makes a difference? In the little things, in the little things. For one thing, especially in the last few months, I love to see my wife sitting up here in the front row, my beautiful wife. Wave hi. You know, but the idea, why? Because there's usually something that is not allowing her to be here. And I'm proud that my son is back there by himself today, doing his thing. Because I believe that God can do, even if he shows me in that one little step, that that's just one little grain, and I'm happy. And I'm happy. If it was worth it, then I say, you know what? God, you got me. You hooked me. I'll do it. It'll hurt, and I won't like it all the time. But you know what? It's reality, and I'll do it. And so what I want to talk to you today is about fasting. Defined by Webster's Dictionary, it's to abstain from all food or to eat only sparingly certain kinds of foods, especially as a religious observance. Especially as a religious observance. I don't like to call it a religious uh, observance. I do like to call it a relational observance because that 
draws me closer to God, right? But of course, remember, this is Webster's Dictionary. They're not there to quote you the Bible. They're there to tell you this is how it's defined according to the laws of man, if you want to call it, right? But biblical fasting is specifically, again, focused just like they mentioned on abstaining from food. Did you know that? Biblical fasting, it never in the word do you see that biblical fasting had to do with, well, um, I, will stop, uh, I will stop plowing the field, and that's my fast. It always relates to food. Why? Because our natural tendency draws on that. Our hunger, our hunger for God will be drawn by our hunger for natural food. If we can have a hunger for natural food that bad, God says, how about you turn that hunger for natural food into a hunger for me? And I'll show you great things through that. And so biblical fasting is specifically focused on abstaining from food. Anything abstained from besides food is seen more as a means of uh, as a means to detoxify our mind, our heart, our spirit from the things that don't benefit us. It's really what it is. And, and I didn't really understand it up until a few years ago when I heard a few messages on it. And I said, that, you know what, that makes total sense. Because I thought just maybe giving up my little social media or TV was enough. No one's telling you to give any of that up. But the idea is that if I'm going to draw closer to God and sacrifice the fact that I am giving up any amount of time of food, any amount of time, again, do not get caught up on, oh, man, 24 hours, dude, you're crazy. Because I didn't even do the 24 hours this time. I'm just telling you, I kicked the tires a little bit, and I saw God do a little or not even a little, a big something for me, right? For me, it means a lot. But I'm just saying, those things make a difference. And so letting go of social media again, uh, whatever accounts. You know, I, I only did it. And if you have me as your friend, you'll probably see one last post today where I mentioned, you know, after my daily biblical post that I just kind of share a little message about what the verse of the day is. You'll also see one last post on top of that that will just tell you, see you in 21 days kind of thing, right? You know, I, I've chosen to do this. No one is telling me to do this. I've chosen. I, I put that on there. But the idea is I did that. The other thing is, you know, I mean, I couldn't say, oh, I'm going to, you know, just totally walk away from TV because I don't watch a lot of TV. So that would almost be like saying, you know, I'm not going to eat Brussels sprouts because I, well, you hardly ever eat Brussels sprouts. Not that I don't like them. I do. But when are they ever in my home? Probably never. When are they at the restaurant? Probably never. The places that I go to, you know, sad to say, right? But, you know, I mean, they don't offer it. But I'm just saying, oh, I'm going to give up carrots. Uh, carrots? You don't even eat them. I mean, so it wouldn't make a difference. What I'm trying to say is it's got to make a difference. It's got to make a little, it's got to be a little thorn. Just a little thorn. Oh, don't talk. I, I, yeah, I, kind of, I kind of encompass that by just saying, you know what, it's, just, it's all or nothing. It's nothing, and that's it. You know, I'm just going to, because, yeah, if I said only tacos, well, then I'll be over there with, with their flautas. They're not tacos. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's, that's, what, that, that's, 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 what, that's, that's how the mind works, right? And so I want to do something different. I want 2023 to be way different from 2020, 21, 22. I want 23 to be greater. I want to see greater things, not only in my life, in my wife's life, in our marriage, in our ministry, in, 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 our, in, our, in our home, in our family. I want to see things happen. I don't want just enough to get by. Do you agree with that? Are, are you sometimes kind of tired of just enough to get by? Even in church, I don't want just enough to get by. We're ready to see God's hand and the river of God flow through this place in a greater way than it ever has. That's what we want. And so as Jesus, I was telling you, Jesus talked about this. I want to go into 
uh, Mark chapter 9. In Mark chapter 9, I also want to encourage you that in 2023, we start making an emphasis to, to have our Bible in whatever format it is. Either it's this or it's this uh, or it's your phone device. Just have the word. Because I, I, I saw, you know, Pastor Patsy didn't hand out a, a, a form last week. And so I was like, you know, I can't keep up. I, gotta, I just had to write it down because, I, I mean, I couldn't keep up with all the verses that she was quoting. Not that she was quoting thousands of verses. She was just, you know, making a point. And so I encourage you in 2023, make that a difference. Make that one step ahead is, you know, I start either bringing my Bible, carrying my Bible, looking up my Bible, opening my Bible online. It don't matter. It's the same word. Don't get caught up in it. Again, don't get caught up in somebody saying, if it's not a paper you can tear, it's not the real word. I have the real word here. I have the real word here. I have the real word in my phone right here. No, I'm not packing a gun. It's a phone. You know? But it's, I have the real word, the truth. The greatest weapon there is. I have it right here. So I guess I am packing, if you want to call it, right? You know? So... Jesus starts, you know, he, he, he's, he's coming up into this group and, and seeing that these, this group of people is there in chapter 9. It starts on verse 14. That's where the story begins. And so um, he basically comes up to some religious leaders and, and his, even his disciples that were there. Uh, and there's a father that came and he had a, a child that was demon possessed. And so he came so that, he, that someone could pray for him, right? That's what was his point, to, 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 to meet up with them and say, religious leaders, disciples, whoever, somebody pray for my boy. He's having these convulsions. He's doing all these crazy things, and, and nobody can do it. And then it says on verse 18 that when Jesus came up, all the attention went to Jesus. Isn't that fun when... when when you feel that good, and, I, and I'm not saying Jesus felt proud of it because he, he didn't. He just, they were just drawn to him. So they were all arguing and with the religious leaders and the disciples, and, and why can't you do it? And, and I don't understand why it's not happening. And then all of a sudden, Jesus just shows up, and it's like, ooh, you know? And so one of them addresses, the, or the father addresses Jesus and says, Teacher, I, 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 I came to, to, to the these people, you know, and your disciples, and, and, and I even brought them so that they could cast out this evil spirit. This is verse 18. But they couldn't do it. That was his complaint. He was basically taking a complaint to the manager, right? He's taking it to the, to the CEO. They, I, I came to them. They said they could, you know, they could pray for anything, but they couldn't do it. And now I'm not happy, basically. I mean, he's not probably... A, very happy. He's probably excited now that he saw Jesus there because he said, now I'm at the top. Now I can get this thing done, right? And so we walk into uh, verses 22 to 24, just saying, uh, where Jesus responds, the spirit often throws him in, uh, this is the, the, the dad talking, the spirit often throws him into uh, fire or into water trying to kill him. Have mercy on us and help us if you can. And that's not something you want to say to the Son of God, if you can. Because Jesus, he kind of felt uneasy about that. Because his next response is, what do you mean, if I can? Anything is possible if a person believes. He put it back on their court. The ball was back in their court now. What do you mean? I can do it. God can do anything for you. God will do anything for you, but if you believe, it's back on us. It's not on God. It's not that he doesn't want to do things. It's not that he doesn't. He, it's, it's all about what about you? Do you believe enough? Will you do enough? Will you do more? And so it says the father instantly cried out, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. That's kind of contradictory to me. I, I, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. It's like, I do believe 50%, but there's the other 50% that still says, I don't 100% believe. And Jesus didn't even, he, he probably thought to himself, you don't even know what you're saying, man. I'm not even going to address that. You just made no sense, right? You just made no sense. 
So he goes on in the next, in the next verses where we start uh, Mark 9, 25 to 29. When Jesus saw the crowd of onlookers was growing, he rebuked the evil spirit. Listen, you spirit that makes this boy unable to hear or speak. I command you, not I suggest that you, not I recommend that you, I command you to come out of this child and never enter him again. Never. He gave him a timeline. Never. Because when God says he's going to do something, he's going to do it. He's not going to tell you, well, up until this point, then, eh, maybe. He told him, never come into this child again. And it says right after that, then the spirit screamed and threw the boy into another violent convulsion and left him. The boy appeared to be dead. A murmur ran through the crowd as people said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and helped him to his feet, and he stood up. Afterward, afterwards, when Jesus was alone in the house with his disciples, they asked him, why would I, what caught me there is, why, why didn't they just ask him in front of the crowd? Why? Because the next question is, we couldn't, why couldn't we cast out that evil spirit? Have you ever been that kind of, uh, a little bit on the embarrassed end? I don't want to ask the teacher until the class is over, then I'll ask. Have, has anyone ever done that, or was that just me in, in school? I mean, I, 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 I did that. I'll admit, I waited till the class is over. Get Everybody get out of here. Hey, teacher, um, I know this is probably a dumb question, right? And then they come back with the response, uh, there's never a dumb question. <laughs> yeah, but mine is pretty dumb. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> so, so they waited till everybody was gone. And then they went and, and asked Jesus, why couldn't we cast them out? And Jesus said this, this kind, speaking about the spirit, the evil spirit, this kind can be cast out only by prayer. Yes, I got that down. And fasting. Oh, calm down. Prayer. We got it. Fasting. Ah, oh, that's going to hurt. Ah. You know, you get your, I'm like, ah, oh, that's going to hurt. And God says, your pain is nothing compared to your, the glory you're going to see through it. Don't mind a little pain for a little moment when you see the greatness of God through it. Don't mind it. Don't mind it. See, a prayer of desperation requires an act of separation. A prayer of desperation, how bad do you want what you've been asking for? whether it's for a son or a daughter or, uh, um, or, or a career move or your education or, or your family or your husband or your wife, how bad do you want it? That's what Jesus was saying there. This, you did good, you prayed, you did good, but some things require a little more. And are you willing to give that little more? See, in the 1800s, back in, uh, in the 18, you know, in 18, around 1860, they elected a president by the name of Abraham Lincoln. Don't worry, I, I would have had to look it up to you. you know, Abraham Lincoln. And so Abraham Lincoln was an abolitionist, and there's a lot of things that they, they believed uh, or that he believed in, that a lot of the people didn't. Like one of them being, get rid of slaves. Oh, no, th those are my people. I bought them. It cost me money. I ain't getting rid of those slaves. That's just one of them, right? But that, those, are, those are some of the things he ran on. He won. So America was in the Civil War from 1861 to 65, again, during his term. Why did they go to Civil War? Because they didn't like what Abraham Lincoln was requiring them to do, which was the separation of the, of the slaves and a few other things, right? So in 1863, this is three years into his term, or his first term, President Lincoln gave this proclamation. I designate 
and set apart Thursday, April 30th, 1863, as a day of national humiliation, which means dropping your pride, right? Humiliation, kind of humbleness. Fasting and prayer. Humiliation, fasting, and prayer. One day, he made this proclamation. He did this for four years, from 1863 through 1866 or 1867, around there, right? What happened after he proclaimed this and America did it, America as it stood at that time, right, even in the Civil War, what happened was America began to economically prosper because they were going through some hard times because of everything else that was going, right? You know, wars are not always the greatest thing for the economy until usually afterwards, right? There's, there's usually an economic recovery or whatever. But they were still in war, and, and so by 1867 is when he, he saw them economically prosper, or the America economically prosper. And what ways did they economically prosper? In what ways? There was inventions. Inventions were big back then because you got to think about it. you. You you kind of, I mean, the invention of a mobile device was a big thing, wasn't it? I mean, I would hope it, it was for either one of all of us. It probably not all, you know. I mean, from having to walk with a cord to being able to walk freely, that was a big thing. So they created the phonograph, the electric light, the airplane. This is all after all that, right? It all kind of, you know, in years, the years that followed. Auto manufacturing. The auto was not created here. It was created in Europe. But the manufacturing of it and the mass amounts of it was perfected in the United States, in America. See, all these things happened simply because they took the time to bring it to God. They took the time to make God the priority on what was going to happen. And see, today's generation, we can basically get anything we want online. You know? We get it within hours, we get it within days. But there's still certain great blessings that only come through prayer and fasting. I hate to break it to you, but it's just that way. Certain things will always require us to go through prayer and fasting. See, fasting, and I put that on your, on your worship guide. If you haven't received one, you can raise your hand. Fasting is a spiritual discipline that requires a physical action. A spiritual discipline that requires a physical action. See, sometimes we have it backwards. We want to say it's a physical discipline that requires a spiritual action, and it's not that way. The spiritual has to be disciplined in order for us to then use the physical action that we need to push and get things done. Because God wants to do great things in 2023 for us and make those and answer those prayers and desires and dreams and, 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 and needs. But how far are we willing to push? How far? See, it has to go beyond our words. Beyond what I said. That's why my prayer words are good. I've prayed. I've, I've told God, this is what I really need, Father. I, I, let your will be done. And he says, yes, talk to me, son or daughter. But then there are those moments where it's got to go beyond our words. So the amount of our action is a reflection of our belief. The amount of our action is a reflection of our belief. How much are you willing to act? How big are you willing to go in order to see God do something miraculous in your life, in the life of someone you love, in, the, in your career, in your business? How big in your ministry? Maybe you... You, you've known you had a ministry, you had a calling, but you're just holding back for one reason or another. How big are you willing to go to see God do what he's going to do through you? The amount of our action is a reflection of our belief. Matthew 17, 19 to 20 says, Afterward, disciples asked Jesus privately, 
Why couldn't we cast out? This is the same instance in, a diff- in the book of Matthew. And this is what Jesus responds. You don't have enough faith, Jesus told him. I tell you the truth. If you had uh, faith, even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it would move. Nothing would be impossible. Nothing would be impossible if you just had that little bit of belief. But what, some, what does it take sometimes more than just our words to say that we believe? we got to take some action. And we want great things, and God has great things for us. But are we willing to take the action? Greater needs require greater sacrifice. It's the truth. Our faith to receive an answer is measured by the amount we're willing to invest to obtain it. Our faith is measured by what we're willing to invest. What are you willing to invest in 2023? In these next 21 days. I'm not even telling you you have to worry about all the 20. I'm saying in these next 21 days, could you invest? Could you invest some of yourself? Some of the, I don't have that breakfast taco, man, and I really want it. And God says, I know you really want it, but you love me so much that you're saying no to that taco, and I love you that much more for it. Talk about Jesus, right? Talk about Jesus, yeah. It's truth. It's truth. Can you give that little bit? Are you willing? And it comes down to this. The question we ask ourselves is, how much are we willing to give up? How much are we willing to give up? How much am I willing to give up? Everyone has that personal answer. No one can tell you, no, you're going to give up. That's wrong. You know what your need is. You know how desperate, your desperation, the amount of desperation you have to see that need met. What are you willing to give up? Number two, the response we receive is not dependent on what others see or think. Matthew 6.16 says, And when you fast, don't make it obvious. Oh, there you go. As the hypocrites do. For they try to look miserable and disheveled, so people will admire them for their fasting. I tell you the truth, that, that this is the only reward they will ever get. In other words, the praise... Oh, man, I know he's fasting. Woo, look at him. Look at him, man. Gosh, I mean, he, he, look, he looks weak, but I know it's just because he has so much fire in him that he's not eating those tacos in the morning. Man, I know it. I know it. Your goal is not to think about what others are going to say about you, but think about what God wants to do through your sacrifice. Others don't need to know the cost or pain of your sacrifice. Others don't need to know it. I don't need it. I shared with you, but I'm not giving you the details of what I did. I don't need to. And that was just as an example. I said, I kicked the tires. I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to do uh, in, in week two, right? There's going to be some stuff. And I'm not going to also come into uh, prayer or to church the following Sunday dragging and saying, dude, you don't even know what fasting is, man. I know. That's not even the point. For many years, we go to church and we, and, and we think, and some people in the old school church was, w- w- used to think, well, you know, I mean, look at me. Look at what I gave up. I don't care what you gave up. God's the only one that should care about what you gave up. Don't tell me. Because if you want only my reward and to tell you, Good going, bro. That's as much as you're probably going to get. Just what Jesus was saying right here. You want the pat on the back? That's as much as you're going to get. You know? Thank you for doing it. Thank you for coming. Thank you for taking time. God bless. Because God's not going to take delight in the fact that you're asking for it. Now, people, you know, sometimes, you know, discernment happens or whatever, and people can know. But I don't have to know the details of what you're doing. We fast only for the one who can give us the right response. See, we don't, we don't take it lightly when you do this. Fasting is not to be taken lightly. That's why it's so hard. That's why you may be looking at me with a face that says, this is the most uh, un, 
attractive topic to talk about. It is. But that's why Jesus told his disciples, you want to know why you can do it? Just be in prayer and fasting. That's what you need. You want me to whisper it to you because you, you, you were embarrassed to ask in front of all the other people? I'll still tell you it was praying and fasting. That's, that's what Jesus did. He didn't make them feel bad about it. He, didn't, he, didn't, he, he just gave them the answer. This is why. And to be honest with you, I don't think they had a rebuttal on the answer. Yeah, but you know that we pray with, you know, we pray 10 hours a day, right? We're working with you all day. What do you mean we couldn't do it? They didn't even bother. Said, he made a point. He's the son of God. <laughs> he always makes a point, but he, he made his point. And the last thing, the acts of obedience and sacrifice we offer will always be challenged by the enemy. Always be challenged by the enemy. Matthew 4, 1 through 3 says, Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil. For 40 days and 40 nights he fasted, and I underlined it there. Do you see that? What did I underline? Or is it not there? Oops, might not be there. But the next thing he says, he became very hungry. You will become very hungry. If your fast has to do with food, you will become very hungry. And it's sometimes not even so much as because, well, I don't even eat this much on a regular basis. Why am I feeling so hungry? You know, sometimes I don't even worry about, I mean, breakfast for me is a, you know, a, a, little, uh, a little bit of coffee and maybe a cookie and that's it. But now I'm feeling like I haven't eaten in 21 days. Because the enemy will always, always challenge you. When you make a sacrifice of obedience to God, he's going to challenge you. He's going to challenge you. And as I read to you a little while ago, during that time, the devil came to him and said, if you are the son of God, Tell these stones to become loaves of bread. See, he didn't tell them, if you're the son of God, why can't you just make me disappear? No, I'm going to throw something at you that I know your physical body really wants right now. Turn these stones into bread just, just to show me. I'll eat it. You know, maybe the devil was going to tell him, or maybe he did tell him. I don't know. Maybe it's not written in there. Maybe he told him, I'll eat it. Don't worry. Just make it, and I'll eat it. I'll enjoy it. Jesus just responded with, again, the word. What did he say? Man does not live by what? Bread alone. But by what? I think he just threw the mic at him and said, anything else, devil? I'm hungry. I'm not lying. The word of God says he became hungry. We are going to become hungry. There's going to be things. The social media app. I'm probably going to go home. I'm going to sit down. and I'm Man. That's not my fast, though. I'm not fasting from that. Because, again, what is a fast? Food. But there is a separation that has to happen. My desperation requires my separation. And I got to make things happen. And I got to do things that I don't sometimes want to do. But I do them because I want to draw closer to him so that he can show me what I need to do. I don't want to be lost in 2023. I want him to show me. For all the list of things that I've put on that prayer wall back there, I need, I need, I need to put some money into this. And I'm not talking about an offering. I'm not here to pick it up. Don't worry. I'm talking about what is my sacrifice? What is your sacrifice? What are you willing to do to see it get done? The moment we decide to go beyond our words and connect closer to God by fasting, the devil is threatened. You want to threaten the devil? Start doing something that he totally is going to hate. Because he hated that Jesus responded to with him with that answer. He wanted him to say, oh, yeah, I'll show you. Boom. Not just a loaf. A whole bakery of bread. Because I am the son of God. 
That's what, that's what the enemy wanted. I, I, Jesus told him, I, I ain't dumb. You know, I know what you're trying to do. My father created you, man. I'm a step ahead of you. What are you talking about? God is a step ahead of us. See, the enemy will keep shoving and saying, come on, just do it. It's only a taco. It's only a, you know, it, it, it's, 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 only, it's a vegetable soup. But if you gave up completely, that's not right. There are many ways to fast food. Not fast food as in fast food, Burger King or stuff. I'm saying there are many ways to fast food items or cons the consuming of food items. And there's, there's a Daniel's fast, which really has to do more with the veg vegetable side of it, non-sugar side of it. Maybe that's your thing. It didn't really work all that well for me, <laughs> you know? So I just say, if, even if it's a, a period of time, maybe I haven't done the, the full 24 hours. You know what? But God, I'm giving it to you. I'm going to do 9 to 3. I don't know. I'm going to do it, but, be, I, but I'm going to do it all or nothing because I already know. I tell myself I'm going to eat uh, nothing but a caldo de res and take out the meat, and it doesn't happen. The meat still gets in my mouth somehow. I'm, 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 I'm just being honest, and I'm being real about it. Does that make sense? And so, again, Jesus was a step ahead. But again, it goes back to the question, how bad do we want it? How bad do you want the new things God has for you in 2023? Because 2022, we went through our ups and downs, and maybe it was a transition year of things that we lost in 21 or 2020, uh, uh, things that changed. You know, we, we graduated from one thing, we moved into another, you know, Whatever it was, and that, that's all fine and dandy, but I want greater in 23. I can't just say, oh, I'll stick with 22. It was good enough. It got me through. I'll do it. I just want that. Do you want to stay with the same wage all your working life? Whether you work for yourself or you work for somebody else, do you just want to make, oh, our business, it clears 60000 in profits every year. Woohoo! For the next 20 years. Nice. I hope you invested it wisely because... After a while, you know that you wouldn't want to just live on 60000 a year on your business. Your business needs to grow. You're looking, God, I want to be blessed to bless. You're already looking ahead. I want to be blessed to bless. Not so much as so Gus can keep consuming it, but so that as Gus receives his portion, he gives a greater portion. And I don't own my own business. I work for the man said in the industry, right? You work for the man. Yeah, I do work for a man. Very nice man, too. But I work for a man. But that's the means that God uses to provide in my household. But that doesn't mean I steal from what belongs to God. That doesn't mean I, when somebody asks me for some help, that I say, well, you know, I'm, I don't think I can do that for you. I find whatever I can, and I help. I, I can't guarantee them thousands of dollars, but I can guarantee them I can bless you somehow. Why? Because I figure if I can stretch myself a little bit, God will stretch the little I have left to greater. Again, this isn't a financial seminar either. I'm just telling you, that's how God works. What you are willing to give, the, the 9 to 3 fast, the maybe the 6 to 12 fast, you know, you wake up at 6 a.m., you know you got to get to work, but, you know, I'm going to give something up. Whatever it is, whatever you're willing to fast, God will stretch it to make his purpose happen in your life for 2023. So we have to think about it. how do we plan that out? How can we prepare to fast in 2023? Not only in these 21 days, but in throughout 2023, because there are going to be circumstances that may drive you in August or in September or in July that are going to say, God, I, I can't get, I don't know what else to do. I, I, you, you, know, you know my need, you know. And all you got to do is say, but you know what? I'm going to stretch myself. I remember in January they mentioned something about doing a little extra more than my words. Okay, God, today I'm going to fast. If I could do it in January, I could do it in, in July or in August, whatever. So how can we prepare to fast in 2023? Prepare your plan. Proverbs 21.5 says, know why you're, uh, I'm sorry, 
It says, good planning and hard work lead to prosperity, but hasty shortcuts lead to poverty. See, I can take shortcuts all my life and say, no, I'm a prayer. I'm, man, Jacob, can you make sure the, do the doors are open? Because I'm going to come pray. I'm just going to come pray. And God's saying, that's good that you're there praying. How about a little more? How about you do like I asked my disciples? It was good that you were praying. Fast. Do something a little harder. Do something where that thorn starts, ow, I don't like that little poke, but I'll, I'll, I'll do it. Because eventually that poke will go away. And all of a sudden, all I have left is the goodness of God. Plan. Know why you're fasting. For who? For what? For when? Right? You may have a goal at the end of the year. By the end of the year, I want this. No. P prepare your plan. Prepare yourself spiritually. John 15, 7 says, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you can ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. You remain in me and my words remain in you. We need to read this word. We need to pray, but we also need to read. We need to know the word. We need to sometimes separate from the things that are kind of mm, distracting, especially in these 21 days and in these moments when we fast. What is distracting me? Sometimes my TV, sometimes my social media is distracting me. Sometimes my secular music is distracting me. I'm not telling you don't listen to this and don't listen to that. I'm telling you, sometimes we just need to separate for them. My Facebook does not make me a sinner. My Instagram does not make me a sinner. It's just sometimes I need to separate it and say, God, me and you, toe to toe. I need, I, I need something. I, I need it more. I need it more than I thought I needed it. You know? Prepare yourself spiritually. And then the last thing, prepare yourself physically. 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17 says, Surely you know that you are, the, you are God's temple and that God's spirit lives in you. That's not the whole verse, but that's enough of the verse. You are where God resides. Are you taking care of where God resides? In the parentheses underneath, oh, actually, they didn't put the parentheses, but the parentheses underneath, I had put exercise, eat healthier, limit portions, avoid negative people, avoid gossipers. Why? Why is that part of the physical? Because when I start hearing that, my mind, my carnal mind starts to get negative and like, Oh, yeah, I heard about that. The mind is a part of my physical being. The Word of God says that when he comes in, he renews my mind. But guess what the enemy wants me to go back to is my natural mind. And so that's why I have to take care of myself physically. Exercise. Ah, oh, don't say with that. Come on, get off. I thought you skipped that. You got to do something. You got to walk. You got to move. The day I realized that going up and down these stairs to do something for Pastor Rudy was getting me out of breath, I had to do something. I'm sorry. I'm being honest with you and I'm being real with you. I am not the most fit person. Trust me, I love my tacos. But I did something. And sometimes I got to thank Aaron because when he started doing something, I started saying, I can do something because he can do something. I'm not running the marathons, brother. I, I, I love you. But I went from half a mile of walking to just over four miles of running four times at least, at least four times a week at the minimum. Because it's that critical. I'm not here to glorify myself. I'm here to tell you that a little bit, that the first half mile step that I was almost out of breath, it made a difference. But it didn't happen from here to then, trust me. Aaron and I had this conversation probably over three years ago. That's how long it's taken me just to get there. He probably runs four miles in a matter of minutes. It takes me a little while, but I'm under the hour now, so I'm okay. But you know what? It's about taking care of the temple. And I have kids and I have a wife that deserve that I at least, at the very least, take care of. Yes, I get extremely tired. I really do. I'm over the 50 hump now. Ooh, you're over 50? Please say that. 
Um, please ask yourself that question. But no, I, I am over the 50 hump now. Literally over. I'm not at the 50. I'm over it now. But, uh, and I feel it. And some of the hardest things I can tell you is making myself in my latter age get into that point of I need to do something. And I'm not telling you go run four miles. I'm, I'm just telling you take a few steps. Do a little yoga. I don't know. Stretch. Do something. Just do it. Because God deserves that much more. Eat healthier. I struggle with that. But it's, it's, it's a work in progress. Can I put it nicely that way? It's a work in progress. We just have to make sure we're taking care of what God gave us. Prepare yourself physically. See, because at the end of the day, the main reason why we fast goes back to Matthew 6.33. And you're, when I read it, if you don't know it right off of the fact that, that I said the verse or where it's located, you'll say, ah, I've heard that all my life, dude. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added, or all these things shall be given to you. Everything will be provided. But I put God first in everything. In this 21 days, it's about putting God first for 2023. That's what these 21 days are for. We're not telling you do this or not. You know what? Like I said, there are no guidelines or restrictions to say, you know what? You didn't do it that way. Don't even waste yourself for the 21. You know what? You start praying for five minutes. Pray for five minutes. You start giving up one meal. Give up one meal. That's okay. God says, you're doing it for me, and that's what matters. You're not doing it for others to see. You're not doing it just because it's somebody told you to do it. You're just doing it because you love me that much. Are you willing to do it? Are you willing to worship? Worshiping, a lot of times, there's, there, there's many ways to worship. There really is. But one of the most common ways is kind of what we do here on a, day, on, on, a, on a weekly basis, which should be more on a daily basis. And if I can encourage you, there is a, an actual station that is a worship station from praise and worship. That's it. And it's not just your local little station. It's a national station. It's called Air One Worship. Air One Worship. And I'm telling you this because we're going to go into week three, and it's going to be all about worship. And you're going to, I'm telling you, separate yourself from the music that I'm used to. You know, my Selena and whatever, I put that on the back burner. I'm here with God. I'm here with God. He, I'm giving this to him. He's receiving this offering. I'm saying, okay, I worship. You can download the app. You can, 103.7. 103.7 on your radio dial. 103.7. If it doesn't come out clear enough, do use your Bluetooth. Download the app or go to their website. Air One Worship. I love it because it's when I'm listening to the songs, I'm listening to it with the ears of hearing our worship band. I don't know. My, my ears or my mind works that way. I'm not even listening to Chris Tomlin or uh, Blake. Whoever, I don't know, I, all these, I mean, they're, they're, they're great, you know, I mean, and, 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 and I'm so grateful that they wrote, most of them wrote those songs. But when I'm listening to it, I hear, my, I hear myself in my house, Freedom Life Center. It's that critical. Would you give up seven days of all the other music and say, yes, I'll listen to worship? Maybe you have only one CD and that's fine, whatever. But I'm just telling you, you want a variety? It's out there. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. All it costs you is your time. All it costs you is your time. Stand with me. Stand with me. If we put him first, Matthew 6, 33, will you put him first? First, in all you do, so that everything you need will be met. That's Matthew 6.33 in a nutshell. Are you willing to place God first in your life, in your family, in your relationships, in your career? 
in your decisions, in your needs, in your goals, in your dreams? Are you willing to put God first? Would you be willing to say in 2023, in my workplace or in my own business, whatever it is, or even just in my home, I want to see greater things. I want to see greater things in 2023. So I'm willing to give these 21 days to God so that he could do that. He's saying, just give me 21. Give me 21. Give me five minutes in the morning. If you can, give me five minutes in the evening. If you can, give me one of your meals. If you can, listen to something that praises me. Not praises a person, but praises me. Are you willing to do it? Are you okay with that? Maybe you're on your first step and you're saying, well, what is this guy talking about? And why do you even talk about all this? And what is, what is this whole thing? I mean, I heard about Jesus. Yeah, he's in a manger or he's on Easter Sunday. I encourage you today to take one step, a step of faith. As we close our eyes, I always say this, this 10 second prayer can change, transform, revolutionize, change direction of your 2023 in your life if you say it with a simple heart, a humble, willing heart. Repeat this prayer after me. Even if you're willing to do so, just put your hand over your heart and say, I need you, Jesus. Or maybe you're saying, I need to reconnect to who Jesus is in my life. I need to put him first in 2023. And today, I commit my life, first of all, and then I want to commit the next 21 days. Somehow, some way, I'll try to do something. Repeat this prayer. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Come into my heart. Today, I declare you my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. You said that. Welcome to the family of God. This is your house if you don't have a house.